All right, guys, I'm here again with my friend the skeleton, and we're going to talk about the different joints that you find in your body, uh, and there are four different types that we're going to be studying in particular. Firstly, what is a joint? Well, the clue's actually in the name. The joint is where any two bones meet each other, or where any two bones will join. It's the point at which that happens. You see what we've got there? We've got the point at which the two things join. Join plus point joint. Okay, so we're looking at a body with a whole bunch of joints. You can see wherever our um, bones are meeting, they are forming a joint. And those joints allow us to do movement in all different directions. Now, as I said, there are four different types that you need to know about. Okay, the first one is what's called the pivot joint. All right, and a common example of that is your neck. Actually, what you should know is that your neck allows you to move up and move down. That's what's called a pivot joint. And actually, this is where my skeleton is not particularly great. I use this for examples, obviously. The neck joint here, um, this one allows movement from side to side, yeah? but it should also allow movement um, forward. However, this model is quite rigid. It doesn't really show it very well. Just think about your neck there. That's an example of a pivot joint. The next one is a hinge joint. Hinge joint is far better shown okay, on my skeleton. You see here, this is an example of a hinge joint. This is the elbow. Okay, and what you can see is that allows movement through 180 degrees. Okay, your hinge joint allows movement from this all the way to closed, and then that will go in half a circle, that's 180 degrees. It's a hinge, just like the hinge on a door. Okay, next type is something called the ball and socket, and that's really clues in the name. Okay, the ball, you should know that your uh, shoulder is an example of one of this type. Your shoulder bone here, your top of your um, humerus, has got a kind of ball shape and it fits into this hole here and this is what we call a socket. It's what's called a ball and socket. And there's quite a lot of freedom to move yeah, in your ball and socket move, um, joint. You're able to move around this way. However, we're also able to move up and down and around as well. So there's movement in all directions allowed by your ball and socket joint, ball and socket joint within reason. Now, the last one, is what's called the fused joint, and that's one that you might not be aware of. We talked about before about the number of bones inside the body. Well, that number of bones when you're a baby is a lot more than, than when you are an adult, and that's because bones are doing what we call fusing together. Now, the best example of that is in the skull. Okay, you might not be able to see very clearly here. Okay, but if you look at the skull, there are little lines where small bits of bone have grown and joined together to form one bone, and that one bone would be the skull. We need a strong skull, we don't want it to be soft, okay? You should know that baby skulls are quite a bit soft, that's part of that reason is because these bones haven't fused together yet. Now these bones don't actually allow any movement, okay? They are just the formation of those bones joining together and um, coming together for reasons, in this case, of protection. So generally, if you think about protection, you're thinking about those fused joints. They've lost the ability to move. Alright, hope that's clear. You can now get on with uh, task one, answer those questions, and then you can move on to task two once you've done so as well.